In this presentation, we discuss about curriculum work, how it's done in practice, and who does it. Starting the curriculum work at university level. Curriculum work progresses in stages. From a process point of view, the cycle starts when the vice rector of the university defines the core objectives of the curriculum cycle, which are then concretized into faculties by the dean and the head of academic and students' affairs. Thereafter, the faculty instructs its own departments on the curriculum's emphasis and schedule. Curricular planning is not the responsibility of a single teacher, nor only administrative task. Curricula are planned and realized in faculties and units as a teamwork. Curriculum is a process. When a unit starts curriculum work, it is a good practice to first consider the current curriculum and consider what is workable and what is needed to reform. Particularly supportive is the benchmarking of the curriculum of the nearby field and to consider whether there is something that could work in one's own curriculum. It is also worth recalling the feedback information that was collected during the previous course. Use of feedback means that the unit compiles feedback data and discusses what action it might give to this curriculum round. Discuss also with your colleagues about the goals of the degree and the study modules. What is your educational task? And what kind of skills do you seek with education? The curriculum must be drafted so that it gives students a clear picture of the objective of their degree education, as well as the objectives of individual courses and their relation to the degree. The teacher should think about what the student should know when the course is completed. What are the learning outcomes of the course? Learning outcomes. With the help of a clear definition of the learning outcomes, the planning of teaching and learning becomes concrete. A base and tools for personal study plan discussions are created. A solid base for evaluating teaching and learning is gained. The student learns to understand and describe his or her own expertise better and it eases recognition of prior and elsewhere obtained learning. In phase three, the teacher has to plan the study materials of the course. What kind of themes do you include in the course to reach the learning outcomes of the course? You should also plan the teaching methods. Do the plan teaching methods support the development of the knowledge and skills that are described in the learning outcomes. Teaching methods. When choosing the teaching methods, it is important to evaluate the degrees forms of teaching and learning as a whole. Do the use teaching methods support the development of the knowledge and skills that are described in the learning outcomes. Diverse teaching methods support the development of the student's general working life skills. There are many different teaching methods that can be used. You can, for example, encourage the students to work in pairs and make the teaching situations interactive especially on courses covering familiarization with working life, the guest lectures can be used. The university's alumni are often pleased to come for a visit to their former university. Work in study circles supports independent work skill, gives responsibility for one's own learning and creates commonality. Remember, 
also the opportunities of educational technology. An important part of the curriculum work is to consider the assessment process and methods. The students must know before the course what kind of assessment methods are used. Assessment. Also the assessment must be aligned with the intended learning outcomes. Essay answers are usually not enough to assess the skills that an academic expert needs in working life. The feedback given to the student is important in the assessment process. A mere grade gives the student quite an unclear perception of what should be improved in his or her performance. Constructive alignment in the curriculum means that the goals, teaching methods, contents of the teaching, materials, assignments done by the students and assessment of the education are aligned. In choosing the forms of teaching, studying and assessing, the central starting point is to support the attainment of, of the learning outcomes of the degree, study modules and course which are noted in the curriculum. Curriculum is also a cycle. First part of the cycle is planning. Remember constructive alignment. Implementation is the phase in which plans will be translated into action. Evaluation determines the success of both the students and the program. Development or improvement is the process of making changes and improving an existing curriculum. All in all, Look at the curriculum as a cycle, not as a straight line. When you do this, it will mean none of the process is done once and for all. Planning, implementation, evaluation and development are ongoing processes which are related.